Greetings, unsettled souls. Sam I.B. began you doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. Uh, you might know me from uh, Blasting News, possibly uh, Teddy Stick or the Conservative Daily Post. I want to give a shout out to Wits News, who's been uh, publishing a lot of my work since I have been uh, kind of screwed over by Facebook and whatnot. So make sure you go there, check out what they're doing. Um, I have I have articles going up there quite frequently. I also have some interesting things in the works for um, Lords of Acid and those of you that like the musical side of what I do when it comes to interviews. It's going to be a really interesting spring. It's already set up nicely for me. I also want to remind everybody as we get started that you can get t-shirts now. Go to Bonfire. One of them is called the Say It All shirt. And it has a nice, um, well, it says it all, to Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, YouTube, Monsanto, Google, and the United Nations. Uh, don't forget, too, you can get the uh, Use the Thinking Part of Your Brain t-shirt. It's only 20 bucks. the Correct Views t-shirts at Bonfire. All right, friends, we're going to get into what you're waiting for us to dive into. Of course, that is the massive Fukushima update. Uh, do me a favor, friends, and make sure you share this. It's by far and away the most popular thing that I do. And uh, remember that this is listener-supported, which you can uh, can help at the, uh, the correct views on Hotmail.com through PayPal. All right, friends, NPR, executives in Fukushima nuclear disaster deserve five-year prison, prison terms, prosecutors say. The former chairman and two vice presidents of the TEPCO Electric Power Company should spend five years in prison over the 2011 flooding and meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, Japanese prosecutors say. Uh, they're accusing the ex executives of failing to prevent a foreseeable catastrophe. Now, let's go into this for a minute because the off-the-cuff answer is how could it be a foreseeable disaster, acts of God? I, the acts of God, though they are maybe hard to prevent, are not hard to predict, is a good way to put it. There were people, and I'm not talking about mystics or psychics or something, I'm talking about there were scientists who said that an earthquake as strong as the one that wiped out the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant was going to happen within the lifespan of the nuclear power plant. And they said, don't build it. They also said, if you're going to build it, make the break wall higher. And even if you're not a scientist, common sense will get you a long way in this world. Japan is an island created by, come on now, created by an earthquake. Now, what do you think uh, is probably going to destroy Japan one day? Yep, an earthquake. Now, I'm not saying that that strong of an earthquake is going to have Japan. Sam said Japan's going to be washed away with an earthquake. He's not credible. I'm saying that there is an extreme amount of seismic activity all over the world. You can look this up. Zero Hedge does a great job. Look up Zero Hedge earthquakes. Um, I think I have a story coming up about it, but they have many. Okay, but particularly in the area near Japan and near California, have been particularly active, and that matters to a huge degree because this was predicted. They did know about it, but they went to the they went for the bottom line, the dollar is what they went for. Prosecutors say that TEPCO, which is GE, General Electric, they brought great things to life, all right. That's why I suggest not being in those stocks and mutual funds. Prosecutors say the TEPCO executives didn't do enough to protect the nuclear plant, despite being told in 2002 that the Fukushima facility was vulnerable to a tsunami. In March of 2011, it suffered meltdowns of three reactors, of course, along with powerful hydrogen explosions. Now, let's remember, this is from NPR, National Public Radio, so please don't come at me saying about my right-wing bias here. This, this is a very left-wing organization, and they're absolutely right. It was easy to safeguard the plant against tsunami, but they kept operating the plant heedlessly, prosecutors said on Wednesday, according to the Ashahi Shimbun. That led to the deaths of many people. Former TEPCO chairman, uh, I'm going to butcher this poor name, Tunzashia Katsumata, 78, former vice president Ichiro Tekakuro, 72, and former Vice President Sake Muto, 68, 
face charges of professional negligence resulting in death and injury. Muto and Tekakuro once led the utilities nuclear division. All three have pleaded not guilty to Tokyo District Court saying they could not have predicted the tsunami. How could you be on an island nation and not know that a tsunami could happen. For that matter, it's very obvious, and it has been spoken of ad nauseum, that it is a huge red warning flag to California that they are looking at these same issues with nuclear power plants. And let's remember that the earthquake alone started at least one of the meltdowns. Now, that's not normally addressed, and you need to pause. I know I've mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it again because it's vital. One of the meltdowns was caused by the sheer earthquake alone, and it's arguable as to whether or not they would have been able to have restored power there in time to stop at least one of those reactors from going red. Now, I'm not saying it would have for sure, but there definitely would have been, uh, I would say you could, almost, you could almost guarantee there would have been some kind of release there just from the earthquake alone prior to the damage done by the tidal wave. And, that's important because so many nuclear power plants do sit where there isn't an ocean and the people living there would assume that they're safe, but earthquake activity could change that rapidly. Um, the stricken plant triggered mandatory evacuations, of course, for thousands of people. And the sentencing recommendation came as prosecutors made their closing arguments on Wednesday, more than two years after the executives were initially indicted. Hitting on what the defense arguments might be, NHK cites the prosecutor saying the former executives later claimed that they had not been informed and that the executives put all of the blame on the subordinates. Um, again, tried to weasel out of it, tried to just get out of it. And as you're going to see when we get to the dumdy of the day, though there's no low that they won't stoop to in order to try to keep this as profitable for them as they can, despite the risks now that have been proven in abundance. Let's move on. This was actually sent to me from Steve Witz. Uh, Natural news. Is Fukushima radiation affecting the West Coast? Consider the signs. Oh, but Sam, they said that there's safe levels of radiation in the food. That's what they said. Uh, And again, we've explained this before, but I'll do it quickly for people that may have just tuned in. And I know this is being shared more, and I'm appreciative of that. Um, We know that radiation does a certain amount of damage here. So we're going to make this safe, even though it's probably not most people will be okay, or at least won't get cancer for a very long time when radiation levels are here. But we keep seeing it go up and up and up. I'm going to be doing a special uh, two articles on 5G and a smart meters. All of you forgot about smart meters, didn't you? Let's see what the fallout's been from it. Well, by the same token, after Fukushima, they raised the level of radiation which was acceptable. So if the safe zone was here, now it's sitting up here. And since, you know, it's not that far, then we're saying it's safe. Those are the kind of lines that are being used. So when you hear that this supposed safe to eat tuna, one, it's a lie. Two, based on what? How do they know how much tuna you eat? There's a lot of vegetarians and vegans on the West Coast that would probably consume a whole lot more, well, not, sorry, not, not vegans, sorry, but a lot of people that don't eat meat on the West Coast that would like to know this, I'm sure. This isn't a left-right issue here. This is actually an issue where I agree with the left more than some people that are libertarians, uh, which I claim to be. So let's face it, this, this isn't about whose party affiliation we are. We can argue about that in future shows, but this, I think, is too big for that. And I can't overstress that. Um, oh, I just need to hit that link. In March 2011, the pro- province of Fukushima was struck, of course, by a tidal wave. We know this. But we're going to, as I let my page refresh, because I got clicker happy. Um, experts estimate that it will take at least 40 years to finalize this cleanup. And in the meantime, 300 tons of radioactive water continue to be pumped into the Pacific Ocean each day. The BBC, again, hardly a right-leaning website, reported in 2013 that the true levels of radiation around Fukushima were about 18 times higher than they originally thought, Uh, they being TEPCO. The Tokyo Electric Power Company estimated in that same year that between 20 to 40 trillion becquerels of radioactive strontium, which 
goes right into bone cancer, has already been released into the Pacific Ocean since the disaster in 2011. It is logical to assume that this number must now have increased exponentially. Now, let us remember, of course, that a becquerel is one tiny explosion that happens within the body, which can give you cancer per second. So 40 trillion becquerels would be 40 trillion microscopic explosions, which happen inside the body. Any of those can hit another cell, make it mutate, and lead to cancer. If it sounds like I said that quickly, rewind it. I did so only because I say it on many shows. Um, friends, Global Research, a globalization watchdog organization, believes that there are at least 28 lines of evidence that prove that the radiation is indeed causing destruction, including several types of animals, including walruses, seals, and polar bears, have been found with open wounds and fur loss. The U.S. Geological Survey released a statement about the phenomenon, labeling it apopecia or loss of fur or other skin lesions. Huge numbers of sea lions have inexplicably died, with 45% of the pups born in June 2013 not surviving. This is according to NOAA, and they call this an unusual mortality event. Now, I thought that there were a lot of greeny weenies out there who cared so much about the environment. They cared so much about the polar bears that couldn't swim. They actually can, but that's what Gore told us. They cared so much about this, remember? Oh, why are they not caring now? When Noah is sounding the alarm, why is this not getting any attention on the media? Could it be the bottom line that's tied up with TEPCO and GE to keep selling you light bulbs and telling you what great things they bring to light? Could that be it? Populations of sockeye salmon, it says, are at an all-time low low, along with coastline in both Canada and Alaska. Fish along the west coast of Canada have been found bleeding from the gills, eyes, bellies, and nobody knows why. And some of that does hit the dinner plate. We have covered that in the past, but if you don't want to believe me or my links, just look it up yourself. Look up lesions on food, lesions on sushi. It's not good. Um, fish along the west coast, oh, I'm sorry, a field of radioactive debris the size of California was released from Fukushima. It has crossed the Pacific Ocean and reached the West Coast. Now, this is where I want to pause for a minute because it sounds like, oh, this just means there's a bunch of flotsam and junk coming. No, it's not just jetsam and garbage. The stuff that's coming over has been heavily juiced with radiation. Heavily juiced. Enough that if this was, give, if, this, if, if, if an enemy company had drop this on another nation, it would be considered a nuclear attack. Deadly poison. That's what's washing up to the shore. And of course, it'll stay on the shore and stay in the water and poison the fish in the area and people swimming. And are you starting to see the problem yet? Okay, that's the size of California. It's glowing with radiation. Scientists have discovered very high levels of cesium-137 in plankton and in the Pacific, close to Hawaii and the West Coast. In a test performed in California, all 15 bluefin tuna, we've covered this before, that were examined were found to be contaminated with radiation. Canadian scientists have discovered extremely high levels of nuclear radiation in several samples taken from a variety of fish. One sea bass tested, for example, was found to have 1,000 becquerels of cesium per kilogram. That means you have 1,000 opportunities to get cancer per second for as long as that element is in the body, and cesium can last for quite some time. A take to a researcher with the Japan Meteorological Agency's Meteorological Research Institute, no, I cannot say that twice, found that 30 billion becquerels of radioactive cesium and 30 billion becquerels of radioactive strontium, again, bone cancer, are released into the Pacific Ocean from Fukushima each day. 30 billion opportunities to get cancer mutations per second. It also says, alarmingly, scientists believe that about 100 times more radiation has been released into the ocean from the Fukushima disaster than the total amount of radiation released in the Chernobyl disaster. 
And it goes on to talk about the woes of them dumping the water into the ocean, which, again, we've covered not only is happening, but is being greatly underreported on. Guys, I got two stories to get to. I want to remind you, again, pick up your T-shirts at Bonfire. Helps me amazing. One of them, it's only 20 bucks. 20 bucks. And it says, the, the slogan of the show, for crying out loud, use the thinking part of your brain. Please do that and donate to the show at the correct views on Hotmail.com through PayPal. Friends, listen to this. Tsunami kills 22 in Indonesia after volcanic eruption. How long until the left blames global warming? This was interesting. Uh, dated December 23rd from InfoWars. A tsunami has killed 222 people and injured hundreds more in Indonesia on Sunday after a nearby Anaku Krakatu volcanic island erupted. Now, before you say, I didn't trust InfoWars from the Daily Mail. A 20-foot high wave hit beaches around the Sundra Strait between the islands of Java and Samuta. At around 9.30 p.m. local time, destroying 500 homes, 9 hotels, 60 food stalls, and 350 boats. Why am I mentioning this? Again, use the thinking part of your brains. We know that if Mother Nature sneezes, just, just, just has a miss sniff, if you will, on Fukushima. That's going to fall over like a Jenga tower. If that happens, it's going to be what could quite likely be an extinction event. If nothing else, it would clear the uh, northern hemisphere of anybody who wanted to keep their life. Now, as you allow that to sink in, let's think about how many earthquakes are happening in that area. Yeah, I understand it doesn't sound like it's, it's that close, because after all, it's, uh, it's in Indonesia, not Japan. But we're talking about massive, massive plates that are under the earth, or, you know, in the earth, I should say. And that's what's causing these quakes to happen. And an Indonesian plate may even be the same plate that's disrupted by the plate tectonic movements that created Japan to start with. That area is very active, friends. And... It doesn't look for the at all like it's it's winding down. It doesn't look like it's getting better at all. So, friends, I just think it's important for everyone to realize that these nuclear power plants, if something isn't done to shut them down, and if something isn't done to at least make sure proper break walls are there until they can be shut down, or while the debate is being had, then we're as good as done. That, that, that's as easily as I can put it. I called up here real quick. This is from Zero Hedge. Los Angeles rolls out early warning earthquake app. Okay, so now an earthquake's going to hit, and they're going to say, oh, we could have never predicted it. Okay. Let's just use a bit of common sense here. If they're spending this much money on an earthquake app that only buys people a few seconds, which, of course, is important. They can get in their tub, hide under whatever is solid. I, I, I'm for that. But if the fear of an earthquake is strong enough to warrant this kind of spending, then don't you think it would be mildly, just mildly irresponsible to go ahead and build something that amounts to a sitting nuclear bomb on a coastline? Because we've got them all over the country. I mean, it's not just us. Iran wants to build a nuclear power plant on, a, on a, the most active fault zone in the Middle East. Even if they loved the Jewish people and embraced Uncle Sam every Thanksgiving with a new turkey, it wouldn't matter because they're sitting on an earthquake zone. They cannot build that plant there. That's going to kill far more Iranians than any Jews. I guarantee it. All right, friends, listen. Tyler Durden, Zero Hedge, City of Los Angeles, has unveiled an earthquake early warning app for Android and iOS smartphones, which can currently be downloaded from app stores. Created under the oversight of Mayor Eric Garcetti and the city Shake Alert LA has been designed to tap into the U.S. Geological Survey's early warning system. Basically, if anything stronger than a five happens on the Richter scale, uh, the, the precious seconds, they say, to dive under a desk or whatever. And, you know, again, it's good to have. But my bigger point here is that they know something very bad is coming. You know what else is coming? You are an idiot. That would be the Dumbdee 
dumby of the day. And friends, what is the dumby of the day? Well, how many of you remember what Dr. Chris Busby said about burning the debris in Japan? The debris from the earthquake that was near the melted down power plants. He said that when you burnt them, this is Dr. Chris Busby, a physicist. He said that when you burn this debris, it creates a nuclear plume and it'll fall out all over the local area. And he hypothesized that they were moving this all over the area to burn so that when places far removed from the Fukushima prefecture in Japan began to develop cancers, then Fukushima couldn't be blamed. Yeah, that's the kind of nice people. They, they literally did that to cover themselves. Think about how cruel that is. Replay it if you want to. Think about it. Let that sink in. Okay. The bigger point there for this story, however, is how this plays into <coughs> me coughing to death. How this plays into what heating up elements that have been hit with radiation do. Because as we've said a million times, a million times, if you dig up a corpse who was killed in the World War II bombing of Nagasaki or Fukushima, they will be just as radioactive today as they were then. Anybody getting near them would be poisoned in the exact same way with the same intensity because that timeline is nothing for nuclear elements that in some instances can take thousands, if not millions or billions of years to deteriorate, to become something resembling safe, okay? So let's listen. Not only are they trying to say come to the Olympics in Tokyo, even though look up black goo Fukushima, even though we knew we had a melt out where the core blew out of the reactor, even though we know it's deadly, come to Tokyo and oh yeah, we're going to build the uh to the Olympic torch from recycled aluminum from Fukushima. Yeah, it's it's right here on swimswam.com. We're gonna we're gonna heat up debris from Fukushima. In addition to this is from Loretta Race. In addition to sourcing its Olympics Games medals by recycling discarded smartphones and other small consumer electronics, Tokyo 2020 organizers are now planning to use recycled aluminum for the Olympic torches used in the pre-games relay. The aluminum to be recycled is expected to come from temporary housing constructed in Japan's Fukushima, a prefecture stricken by an earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear disaster in 2011. You know, Alex Jones is famous for saying that the way this evil metaphysical world leadership works is that they have to tell you what they're going to do to you prior to when they do it. It's the law of their satanic religion. You will. It doesn't matter if you believe in it. Again, it only matters that they do. They're telling you openly. I'm going to screen share. I've been doing it quite often for those on the Media Speaks YouTube. Look at this. And nuclear disaster. Now, we know how long nuclear elements take to deteriorate. We know how deadly they are. And we're going to use that particular... I'm not against recycling, but we're going to use that particular prefecture's elements, aluminum in this case, as what we're going to use to recycle because it's politically correct. It's good to the people in Fukushima. You are heartless. Yeah, I'm heartless because I don't want you to carry around a piece of radioactive garbage that's been heated up. The torches are expected to consume over 10,000 pieces of aluminum as a symbolic, symbolic effort to uphold Reconstruction Olympics, one of the primary messages of Olympic and Paralympic Games. In other words, come party. Don't worry about the fact that Tokyo probably should have been evacuated and it's still not safe. Just come and spend money here. Don't worry about the radiation poisoning you, because if you do, that's very inconsiderate of the people in Japan. What the hell, people? Really? If you've enjoyed what you've heard, friends, do me a favor. Hit share, hit subscribe. Hitting share helps amazing, so please do so. Um, picking up a t-shirt from Bonfire Helps, and of course, donating at the correct use at hotmail.com through PayPal. It helps, friends. It helps a lot. Good night, and God bless.